This is called the Titan Aero from E3D Online. Roll the intro. get all this built together and get it onto the Ender 3 hopefully without any uh, issues um, but yeah let's go so what you're going to need off first is housing for, to put everything in and also a part fan part as well okay now I didn't realize but I actually needed a little bit bigger bolts a few mil more so I won't be able to install that part sadly but we we'll shall carry on and get this all built together still so okay so first off excuse me <clears throat> you're gonna have to put the little cog excuse me if I can't remember the full term of the name and then there's a grub screw that you basically get that tightened on down there um, also onto on the heat sink you've got the name for it I do apologize my mind's not with it today but yeah you screw that on you've got some thermal paste to put on it as well and then get that in installed like so really self-explanatory you can't really go wrong with that part so basically we've got the old uh, motor get that in front of the old screen okay so then we need to um, work out which way you're going to be having this it all depends on obviously your printer and how you fancy having your cables okay so basically let's have a look let's see think cable and at the top would be a good idea um, okay this is not my going to be my final housing this is i'm going to do it in ptg but for the purpose of the tape tape Oh, it's showing me age. Purpose of the video. <laughs> All right. Okay, so then we're going to uh, get to putting this on, which is the extruder. Very nicely done. Um, you can tell it's machined well. Um, and I think it's true to how they're saying how this is all how this works and guarantees to be a better performance. So. We'll stick that on like so, very simple. Okay, you gotta work out your hot end, so we're going with that. And on this particular housing, there's a groove, so that fits in there quite good. Very impressed so far. And then we've got a tiny little screw. Tiny little one, that is, small as anything. So, if you're like me, clumsy with your hands on small things, get yourself a pair of long long nose pliers or a pair of these and it just pop straight in and move that out of the way then get your allen key that is supplied and then screw that in screw free fairly make sure everything's all lined up okay not going to go any further so that's it okay so that's how it's looking so far um, okay. I hope that's all good for you so far anyway on to the next stage now let's get the old extruder arm put in now <clears throat> on this extruder there's two two arrows one at the top and one inside and this will basically tell you which way you're going to be pulling it Okay, so I'll try and show you because this is quite fiddly to do if you like me. Right, okay, so that goes in. Alright, that locks on to there for a minute. Then you grab the screw button. There is two options I believe, but I went for this one because it's got a nice big nut on it. So, okay, so can. and then basically this, the spring goes on to so get that back down there and then you got the uh, spring so the spring goes on to that like so 
push that there's a little groove and we're going in without pinging it across the room there we go so basically now that's it that's sat in so okay so fairly straightforward when you come to think about it really and then basically just go anti-clockwise to tighten it up to give it a bit more strength or clockwise to make it more looser okay so looking good yeah looking good okay uh, so the next next stage will be oops, tighten that a bit more ne next stage will be is getting onto the heat sink now with this heat sink there's a PTFE tube that you get okay plenty we all know what that is we use it for the Bowden right okay so <clears throat> I've measured out from within the from within the uh, heat sink, push that push that in. Okay, so that's snugly fitted in like so. Okay, now then you got this this black part. I do apologise if I can't remember the name, but um, yeah, it, this one tells you it's 1.75 diameter, which is what we use mostly. There is another one, I believe, it's for, um, 285. So you, you've got the choice there, basically. So basically, when this goes on, it only goes on one way. Okay, so it fits in like so. Okay. Now with with this, I've measured on my calipers. Okay, from the, from where it is to there, uh, it works at 22.0 millimeters. All right, so that gives you an idea of what, what what to cut basically if you haven't got any calipers or anything and you're wondering what what the size should be. So that's how it should look right now. Okay, so now that's done. We bring over everything, and now we're going to put this onto onto the uh, extruder. There is a groove where the hot end um, goes into here. Okay, and then we just slot that in on over the top. Make sure everything is all in the right position. Oops, and it's fell off. That's typical, isn't it? Put that back in, and that will go in as so. And for some reason, it always happens, doesn't it? When you're doing a video, something goes wrong. Right, here we go. Try again. We're in, we're in. Hang on, just got to make sure that cog fits in there snugly. That's not looking snug at all. What have I done wrong here then? Okay. Ah. Let's just undo the tension a little bit. Might be too much tension on there. Okay, we're in, we're on. Okay, so everything looks absolutely nice. Okay, we're getting there. Alrighty, on. Now, there is clones in that out there, but to be honest, guys at E3D made this design and to be fair it's really try and, and buy the original it helps the guys out at E3D to improve things and get things better for everyone you know I mean there's no harm in buying clones and stuff but you know it's always nice to buy the proper one but anyway enough of me rambling on so that that stage done so next stage will be the fan now make sure you know it's not really difficult to work out which way this goes but 
this is facing outwards. All right, oops, dropping the screws. Okay, that's that screw, and there's screw before. Now be very careful when you put these on that you don't over tighten them because you can over thread and then you're in all kinds of trouble. Okay, but as I forgot me screwdriver, and that's typical, isn't it? Um, but as far as it goes, um, yeah, you would put the four bolts in like so, and then that's what it will look like. Okay, on that stage, obviously, because of I've uh, I need to order some little bit bigger bolts. It would all go on like so, and then just trying to just show you guys how this goes on. That would go on like so, and then we'll house it onto the in the three. Okay. Um, obviously, then you would get all this put in. But as we're just doing the demonstration on how this is installed, the rest of it's really easy to be fair in the next video we will be doing a bit more of the cable getting the cable them in and everything and getting it onto the get onto the gantry um yeah uh, until the uh, next part see you soon